Hello and welcome back to another full step by step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the Montec Sky 2 GX. So taking a look at the other parts I'm going to be using today. For the motherboard I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix X670E eGaming Wi-Fi. For the CPU I'm going to be using AMD's Ryzen 7, it's the 7800X 3D. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 360mm I.O. from MSI, it's the MAG Core Liquid E360. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Team Group's T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 at 6000 mega transfers per second. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive from Samsung, it's their 990 Pro in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got a 1200W fully modular ATX 3.0 power supply from Thermaltake, it's the Top Power GFA3. For the graphics card, I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 4080. Okay, that's all the parts, let's get started. So with the new improved GX version of Sky 2, the tempered glass panel is now a door. It's magnetically attached at the front, we can simply open the door up, and then to remove it, we just need to lift it up. To remove our other side panel, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back we need to loosen. And once they've been loosened, we can pull the panel backwards and lift away. If we take a look at the back of the panel we just removed, you'll notice we've got this perforated area in it indicating that we're going to be able to sign mount fans on the case. There's a magnetically attached dust filter which can simply be lifted away for cleaning. Take a look at our case's top I.O. We've got a power and reset button, we've got two USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port and a separate headphone and microphone jack. To remove our case's top panel we've got a captive thumb screw at the back we need to loosen and then we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards and lift up and away. If we take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you'll notice there's no additional dust filters and Montec are going with just mesh at the top. Our cases from panel is magnetically attached, you can get your finger in at the bottom and simply pull it away. If we take a look at the back of the panel you'll notice there's no additional dust filters and Montec are going with just mesh at the front. With our front mesh panel removed you can see that Montec has still three 140mm ARGB PWM fans. If you prefer at the front, it is possible to mount up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator, and it's also possible to mount up to three 120 millimeter fans. At the top of the case, you can mount up to three 120 or 240 millimeter fans, or up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. Another improvement Montec have done with the GX version of Sky 2 is the thickness for fans and radiators at the top has been improved by 10 millimeters up to 66 millimeters. At the rear of the case, it's up to 120 millimeter fan or radiator. While on the side of the case it is possible to fit up to two 120mm fans. To do this you are going to have to remove this panel. So you'll notice we've got this knob at the top and the line is pointing down the way. In this position it is locked. To open it up you just need to turn it 90 degrees. It doesn't matter which way you turn it. And in the horizontal position the panel is now free. It can be simply tilted out from the top and removed from the case. And you can see with the panel removed we've now got mounting holes for mounting two 120mm fans there isn't any radiator support on the side. If you're not planning on going with fans on the side, you see we do have mounting holes for mounting two two and a half inch drives on the side of the case. Our final fan mounting location is on the bottom of the case. We're going to be able to mount two 120 millimeter fans on the bottom of the case. You can see we've got screw holes here. You're simply going to set your fans on top and use long radiator screws to go down through the fans, securing them to the bottom of the case. And Montec do include these in the case accessory box. So if you do want to mount fans in the power supply side, you're not going to have to worry about them getting plenty of air flow because we've got this nice perforated panel down at the bottom of the case. It is actually removable. There's two screws at the back we're going to need to remove. And then we're going to be able to slide the panel backwards into the side to remove it. So I'm not really sure why you're going to want to remove the panel. Montec do show it as an option in the manual, which is why I've showed you it. But I imagine most people are going to be leaving this panel in place. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to A8X in size and we want to go with the CPR killer, the maximum height supported is 168mm. At the rear of the case we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets and these are now secured on with thumb screws. In terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 400mm. It is possible to mount your graphics card vertically using Montec's vertical GPU mounting bracket, although this has to be picked up at extra cost. In terms of rubber grommets, we've got rubber grommets over towards the right hand side of the motherboard and we've also got one in our power supply stride to bring your GPU cables through. And on the bottom of the case we've got a removable dust filter over our power supply's intake fan that can simply be pulled out from the back before cleaning. So another improvement that Montec have made with the GX version of this case is they've improved the cable reading space. This is now up to 25mm an extra 5mm from the original Sky 2 case. So the extra space should help with cable reading and it's also good to see we've got Velcro cable straps down the centre of the case. You can see at the top of the case we've got a combined ARGB and PWM fan hub and our three pre-installed case fans are connected up to it. 
We've got an additional three ARGB and three four pin PWM ports at the top if you want to add extra fans in. So in terms of the cables coming from our fan hub, we've got an ARGB and PWM cable, which we need to plug into our motherboard to allow us to control both the lighting effects and the speed of any fans plugged into it. We've also got a SATA power connector, which we need to plug into a SATA cable coming from our power supply to power the hub. Don't forget to do this. If you don't do this step, anything plugged into the hub isn't going to work. In terms of brother case cables, we've got a HD audio connector, USB 3.0 cable, front panel type C cable, and we've got our front panel connectors, which Montag have very kindly organized into a single cable. We've got two dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting brackets behind our motherboard. They're each held on with a captive thumb screw. You're gonna simply be able to remove the bracket and fix your two and a half inch drive onto it, screwing it in from the back. Our power supply is gonna go down at the bottom and the case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 210 millimeters. There's no removable power supply mounting bracket at the back, so you are gonna to have to search your power supply in from the side before screwing it in from the back. On the bottom of the case, we've got our hard drive cage and it has two drive trays. They're each held on with a captive thumb screw. And once we have removed the thumb screw, we can pull the drive cage out. And you can see in this top one, we've got our instruction manual and our case accessory box. This is everything that comes in our case accessory box. And there's no need to go search in the manual to find out what screw you use where because it says on the individual bag that they're packaged in. As well, we've got things like our standoff insertion and removal tool. We've got loads of cable ties, Velcro cable straps, and we've got a front panel connector extension cable. So in each of these drive trays, you're gonna be able to mount either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive. And our hard drive cage is movable and removable. So you can see down at the bottom of the case that our hard drive cage is secured here, but there's also notches here and here, which we can move it along to. To do that, we're gonna to have to remove these two screws. So with the two screws removed, we can pull our hard drive cage towards us. And I want to move it further towards the back of the case we just need to line up with the notches and push it into place. And then you just need to screw it in with the two screws from the bottom. And the reason you might want to do this, if you're gonna go with a thick fan and radiator combination at the front of the case, this will give you more room for it. Obviously this is gonna limit your power supply's length. What I'm gonna do is just remove the hard drive cage from the case. To open our socket cover, we need to push this lever down and out to bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard, and then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU gently down into the socket, and there's little notches at the top and the bottom of the socket which are going to line up with the CPU. Once we're happy our CPU is sitting correctly in the socket, we can go ahead and close the socket cover down, and then if we close our lever, the black bit of plastic will pop off. We'll put it in the motherboard box for safekeeping. I'm going to be installing our M.2 SSD in the top slot, so we need to remove the heatsink, which is held on with two screws. If you're using the motherboard from new, there'll be some plastic protection on the back of this heat pad here, and also on the back of the heatsink, which you're going to need to remove. You can then insert our M.2 SSD into the slot. We can then flatten it down, and then we'll move this little clip here to hold our drive in place. And we can then replace our heatsink. We're gonna be installing our RAM in the second of four slot along from the CPU, so I'm gonna open the clips on these slots. Then it's just a matter of lining the RAM up with the slot, and once we're happy, everything's lined up some firm pressure, and it's gonna clip into place. We can then insert the motherboard into the case, line that up with the standoffs at the back, and you'll notice once the middle standoff goes through the hole in the center of the motherboard, it helps hold our motherboard in place. We can then secure the motherboard to the case using nine of the motherboard screws from the case accessory box. Next, we've got our case cables to plug in. Our HD audio cable is going to go in this header down the bottom left-hand side of the motherboard, and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. Next to that, we've got a system fan header, so we'll bring the PWM cable coming from our fan hub through and plug it in. We've got two RGB headers next to that, so we'll bring the RGB cable coming from our fan hub through and get it plugged in. Our front panel connectors are going to go into the left-hand side of this header at the bottom right of the motherboard. So we can bring the cable through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up and push it into place. And our front panel type C header is just above. So we'll bring the cable through, line it up and push into place. We're now ready to install our power supply and I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables we're going to need. So I plugged in our 24 pin cable, a 12 volt high power cable to power a graphics card, two 8 pin EPS cables for additional power to our CPU, and I plugged in a SATA power cable. We're gonna to need to power our fan and ARGB hub with SATA power. 
We can then slide our power supply into place at the bottom of the case, making sure our power supply's intake fan is facing down the way. We can then secure our power supply into place using four of the power supply screws from the case accessory box. Our power supply has a smart zero fan mode, which means when the power supply is under low load, the fan will stop spinning, which will help reduce noise in the build. So we're definitely going to want to turn this to on. Our two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard. So we can bring them through the cutout, line them up with the headers and push into place. And then we just need to pull all the excess cable through to the back. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here. So we can bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. And at the back of the case we just need to connect the SATA cable coming from our fan and the RGB hub to the SATA cable coming from our power supply. We're now ready to start working the I.O. and the first thing to do is set our fans onto the radiator. And then we're going to use the long radiator screws that come with the I.O. to secure the fans. Coming from each of our fans, we've got two different cables. We've got a four pin PWM cable and also a three pin five volt ARGB cable. So I'm gonna start off with the four pin PWM cables and in the box with the IO, we get two triple PWM splitter cables. Now this thicker one you'll notice is labeled as a noise reducer. So this is gonna limit the speed of the fans. It's gonna help reduce noise, but it is also gonna limit your cooling. So I'm gonna use this standard three pin splitter cable. So all I'm going to need to do is take the PWM cable coming from each fan and plug it into the splitter cable. So that's just going to leave me with one 4-pin PWM cable which we're going to plug into our CPU fan header. Next we've got our RGB cables and we're going to daisy chain these together. So coming from each of the fans as well as a standard 3-pin 5-volt RGB cable, we've also got this additional splitter cable allowing us to daisy chain things together. So all we need to do is remove the plastic protection take our ARGB cable coming from one of our fans and daisy chain the next one into it. And then on our third fan, if we remove the little bit of plastic protection and plug the middle fan into it. All we need to do then is plug this cable here into an ARGB header on our motherboard. You'll notice in our first fan, we've also got a spur splitter cable, and this is going to be useful if we take a look at our pump. Because coming from it, we've got two cables. The first is an ARGB cable, and we're going to be able to plug that into that additional splitter cable. Then the one header on the motherboard is going to control the lighting on the pump and also the fans and the radiator. And we've also got a four pin PWM cable. And if we plug this into our pump header, it's going to allow us to control the speed of the pump. Next thing for us to do is install the brackets to our pump, which is going to allow us to attach it to the motherboard. So the bracket you're going to need to use depends on the motherboard you're using. So we've got brackets for Intel, and if you've got an LGA1700 or LGA1200 socket, you're going to use this bracket. We've got ones for Threadripper, and we've also got AMD brackets, so these are the ones we're going to use. So all we're going to do is take our bracket and slide it into the AIO. And we get small screws with the I.O. We're going to pop these in through the holes and secure them into place. So just before we insert our I.O. into the case, I'm just going to pass all the fan cables through to the back. And then we can set our I.O. up into place at the top. And then we can secure our I.O. into place at the top of the case with the 12 short radiator screws. And then we can replace our case's top panel. So you might be wondering why I've installed the I.O. with the tubes at the back. I would much have preferred the tubes coming at the front. So the problem with this, whenever I try sizing things up in the case, because we've got an AMD motherboard, we're either going to have to install it with our pump in this orientation or at 180 degrees in this orientation. And no matter which way I installed it, one side wouldn't reach and the other way the tubes were at a really awkward angle. Whereas in this position here, we're able to install our I.O. nicely with the tubes in a good position. The only side issue that this is going to mean is we're not going to be able to install a rear fan because it would catch on the tubes. I'm going to add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU that is included with the I.O. Before installing our I.O. we're going to need to remove the plastic protection from the cold plate. And then what we're going to want to do is get the bracket on the top over the clip on the motherboard. And then we're going to want to try and get the bottom clip on. And once we've got these in place we're just going to tighten the thumb screws up. So our pump header is this fan header towards the top right of the motherboard. So we can bring the cable coming from our pump up to the top and get it plugged in. And then I'm just going to route all the excess cable up to the top. I'm also going to route the ARGB cable through to the back. And our CPU fan header is this cable here towards the top left. So we can bring the triple splitter cable coming from the fans and the radiator back through. We'll line it up with the header and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. Next thing to do is get our ARGB cables connected up and we've got two options. 
The first thing we can do is pull this additional plastic protection off the cables that are connected up on the fans and plug our pump cable into it. We can then take this ARGB cable, pass it back through to the front of the case and plug it into the ARGB header at the top of the motherboard. But because we've got an ARGB hub here, the easiest thing for us to do is just plug it directly into it. And we've got some plastic protection on the pump that we can remove. So we have the MSI logo here and if your pump isn't sitting straight it is rotatable. It's just a matter of twisting it round to get it into the correct orientation. Because I'm going to be installing the graphics card vertically we're going to have to assemble our vertical GPU bracket. So the first thing we're going to do is set this little piece onto here. We're going to use two of the small screws to secure it into place. And we've got two screws on the side as well. Then we can set our riser cable into place. I'm going to set it on the standoff furthest towards the back and we'll secure it into place with two of the larger screws. So then we're going to have to move all the expansion slot brackets and then we need to slide the bracket into place and then we can tighten up the thumb screws. So we'll just remove the plastic protection from the riser cable, we'll line it up with the PCIe slot on the motherboard and push into place. Next we're going to want to make sure we open the clip on the riser cable. So then we can line our graphics card up with the riser cable and once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just a little bit of pressure to get it to clip into place. So getting the screw in at the side is next to impossible. What I'm going to have to do is install the graphics card to the bracket outside the case and then insert the whole thing in one go. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed the graphics card into the bracket and plugged the riser cable in to the case. And then I'm just going to slide the whole thing in one go and we can then just tighten up the thumb screws. And then we can get our 12 volt high power cable plugged in. So this gives you a look at what the graphics card looks like installed vertically using Montec's own bracket. I am not a big fan of this at all. I think the graphics card is sitting too far up. And yes, I did try installing it further down, but this is the only slot it will go into. Um, it just seems to be sitting too high up where it blocks the RAM, it blocks the AIO and the tubes from the AIO are sitting in an awkward position as well as the cables coming from the power supply. So I'm going to install the graphics card horizontally. So I'll put all the slot covers back apart from the second and third one from the top. So we can then line our graphics card up with the slot and we'll secure it again with the thumb screws. And then we can get our 12 volt high power cable plugged in. Our GPU does come with a magnetically attached support bracket. So I'm just going to slot it into place at the bottom and rest the GPU down on it. So I just think that looks so much better with the GPU in the horizontal position. We're able to see our AI, we're able to see our RAM, and it just looks a whole lot less squashed. And importantly, it's actually going to save you some money. You're not going to need to buy the vertical GPU bracket. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management and get our panels back on again. Okay, so that's the PC setup. If you don't know how to do that, including installing Windows, your drivers, your RGB software, entering the BIOS, updating the BIOS, and adjusting all the BIOS settings, I've made another video that covers all of that, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. What I'm planning on doing now is some thermal testing, and then I'm going to be back with a case review. If you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step build guide, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching. Oh,